This is a deep learning video from Henry AI Labs. This video is on embedding graphs with deep learning. The motivation of this idea is to embed graphs which are typically represented as sparse adjacency matrices or lists into low dimensional continuous vector representations. The picture shows the result of this. You start out with this graph and then you uh, embed it into a space such that you can do things like Euclidean distance clustering. These low dimensional representations are also, also really useful for building supervised learning models that do tasks like link prediction and node classification. So how can we construct low dimensional representations of graphs? Some of the typical methods used are uh, based on matrix decomposition, such as singular value decomposition and multidimensional scaling. Matrix factorization methods, uh, they're basically bottlenecked by the time complexity of matrix multiplication because they each require inverting matrices. So this runs in order n cubed and you know, more clever implementations like Strassen and Cooper Smith Winograd can reduce this running time. But still it's problematic because when you have social graphs like uh, Twitter users or Facebook users, you have an insanely large n. And in addition, it doesn't adapt well to adding new edges and new nodes in the network. So you'd have to redo singular value decomposition each time you add new users to the network. So deep learning. Deep learning is well known for reducing the dimensionality of data. Deep learning is most frequently used in uh, computer vision, speech recognition, and natural language processing. So how can deep learning be extended to graph data? So graph data and text are actually represented very similarly. An adjacency list encoding edges and a one-hot encoding of text tokens have very similar structure and very similar sparsity. So how is sparsity handled in text? In, uh, in text, sparsity is handled with the skip gram model. So the high-level idea of the skip gram model is to slide a context window over sentences and construct these pairs such that you build a deep model that maps from input words to its context. The intermediate representation in the skip gram is used as the embedding of the text tokens. So text data is naturally structured via sentences. So how can we find a similar structure in graphs? The answer to this is random walks. So we can take random walks on, uh, on graphs to construct vertex neighborhoods. And vertex neighborhoods are used uh, in the same way that sentences are used in the skip gram model. So deep walk, it uses a skip gram style vertex encoding. This is done by uh, treating vertex neighborhoods as sentences and deriving vertex neighborhoods from random walks. And then the representations of these vertices are used for downstream tasks like link prediction or node classification. So another interesting thing is that graph and text data both follow this power law distribution of frequency and uh, degree. So like in text, words like the, as, in, they appear really frequently. And in social networks, some users have uh, much more connections than others. So some of the important ideas in SIPRAM are hierarchical softmax and negative sampling. Hierarchical softmax is a really clever way of reducing the number of hidden units you need in your softmax output layer. So if you imagine you're using a Facebook network and you're trying to predict the context vertices, which could contain millions of vertices, you can divide this space by log two of the vertices by constructing it in a binary search tree. So this example shows how eight nodes can be represented with three predictions of the binary search tree. Negative sampling is another one of the key ideas in word to vec What this says, instead of directly predicting uh, the context words, you just predict the binary label of whether this word appears in the context or not. So in the sentence, I am learning about using deep learning to represent graph data. Around deep, learning and using would both be a correct label, and coffee and gorilla would be negative labels because they don't appear in the context. So going further, should we sample uniformly? In deep walk, we treat A, B, D, and C all with the same probability of going to the next node. But in node to vec, we're going to parameterize how we traverse the random walk. So what they find in the paper is that if you traverse the nodes in a breadth-first way, you'll capture the sense of homophily, which means that nodes which are nearby to each other in the shortest path distance sense should be embedded in, uh, you know, have low Euclidean distance in the embed. But if you do a depth-first search traversal, then the nodes will have a structural equivalence in their embedding, 
So in the nodes, in the graph above, U and S6 don't share any neighbors, but they both play a similar role in their communities. So embeddings that represent shortest path distance or homophily is shown here. You can see that, um, you know, that it preserves this notion of uh, how far away are its neighbors. So in conclusion, we've seen how deep walk and node to vec are used to convert adjacency matrices into low dimensional representations. This is done using random walks in the skip grant model. Thanks for watching.